Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings had a multitude of VFX houses producing over 2,000 VFX shots. 1,761 of them made the final cut of a movie that broke the MCU movie cookie cutter mould along with various box office records. Rodeo Effects, Scanline, Trickster, Rising Sun Pictures, Digital Domain, Weta Digital, Fin Design and Effects, Luma Pictures and Method Studios all contributed their VFX superpowers to produce yet another Marvel blockbuster. Rising Sun was given the mammoth task of creating the massive Talo environment, where a large part of the movie transpires, and a digital jungle that would serve as a backdrop for the latter parts of the film. The Talo environment is approximately 75 square kilometers of jungle, mountains, lakes, and rice paddies, whose look was based on Southeast Asia. Rising Sun pictures started by laying out a physical structure based on research they did on forested areas of Vietnam and East Indonesia, and then built up a library of trees and flora based on their research. This included many varieties of bamboo. The team wanted the environment to feel completely natural despite being 100% CGI. So instead of handpicking where to put a lake or waterfall purely for aesthetic reasons, they decided to use procedural methods. They ran erosion simulators to wear away parts of the landscape where water would naturally run, and tree and plant density were dependent on whether an area was wet or dry and how much sun it received. This method meant that the vegetation appeared where you'd subsequently expect it to, giving the environment a much more natural feel and allowing for happy accidents to occur, much as they do with nature itself. Once RSP had their environment looking and lit like a jungle in Southeast Asia, they then had to incorporate live action plates and a partial set that wasn't filmed in Southeast Asia. The live action plates were shot near Sydney under the harsh Australian sun, so RSP had to adjust these plates to match the deep mix of light and shadow of their jungle, paying special attention to the edges of the action where the bright Australian light could push through. Trickster was given the tricky and rather awkward job of creating creatures based on Chinese mythology and making them look real whilst still maintaining their magical feel, and they found themselves constantly battling to maintain the illusion. There are already some extremely strange animals on our planet, but we accept them to be real because they are so detailed and realistic. Trickster had to create a fox with nine tails, a horse with scales and a dragon's face, and a creature with no face, four wings and six legs. And they had to make us believe they were real. Funnily enough, the dragon horse was the hardest to get right. How does a fur-covered area on an animal transition into a scaly area? We don't know because no animal has both. How do metallic teal scales react to light compared to hair? We don't know, because no animal has metallic teal scales. Does fat move more underneath fur? or underneath scales. The problem Trickster had was that nobody knew how these things were supposed to look, but everybody could tell how they weren't. We last saw Abomination in the 2008 film The Incredible Hulk, and since then he has continued to transform, and now looks a lot like he does in the comic books. Trickster combined concept art from Marvel, the original asset from the 2008 film, and references they took from developments and changes Hulk has gone through since then, and began to plan how each part of Abomination should look. For his face, they tried blending the original 2008 asset with a 3D representation of the face of the actor who played Emil Blonsky in the 2008 film. They then sculpted a model with Marvel's feedback, reinforcing proportions and shapes until everyone was happy, and used all of their reference material to add displacement and bump details alongside textures, and at the same time as the creature simulation team found the best setup for the way the skin slid over the muscles on his bicep and calf muscles. Rodeo was planning to travel to Macau to shoot background plates and reference plates and get HDRIs, scans and photogrammetry, but then the pandemic hit. Travel was restricted and the only viable option left to them was to create a fully CG Macau.
First, Rodeo had a question. How do you build a replica of a city when you don't have any data on its topography or geometry? They didn't know the answer either, so they Googled it. Yes, Google Maps. That's it. Using Google Maps, OpenStreetMap data and photogrammetry tools, they extracted a rough geometry of every building in Macau and used that data to populate an empty canvas. Next, they extracted the elevation and topography data and used it to displace the ground plane of that canvas. This gave them an almost perfect starting point for recreating Macau. Luckily, the production team had aerial footage of downtown Macau that had been taken for scouting purposes. This, along with a catalogue of visual references from the internet, gave them virtual referencing material for creating a fairly accurate representation of Macau. Since the building for the bamboo scaffold fight scene was going to be a CG in-construction skyscraper, the team had to plan whereabouts in the city they were going to place it. Once they had its exact location nailed down, they could then break down which of the neighbouring buildings would need to be hero buildings and which could be 2.5D digital matte paintings. For the bamboo scaffold fight scene, the team created a rough mock-up of the scene and tagged every shot to its location on the building. This enabled them to determine which window the characters would emerge from at the start of the scene, over how many stories the action took place and which windows would be damaged. The live action plates for the scene were shot on a section of bamboo scaffolding put up in front of a mirror wall and surrounded by blue screens. This was done so that they could capture the action on the scaffold and the reflection of it in the mirror wall. The action, the scaffold and their reflections on the mirror wall could then be rotoscoped because the blue screen background was also reflected in the mirror wall. Unfortunately, so were the reflections of the camera crew and their equipment and so these had to be painstakingly painted out. Please give us a like if you enjoyed this video. Don't forget the links to the music used in this video are in the video description. And let us know in the comments below which movie VFX you'd like to see behind next.